Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's live video um, on self-care. Self-care in the window of tolerance. Self-care for better family relationships. And you may be wondering, why am I putting this in a week where I've been talking about boundaries? Well, I'll get there later, but it definitely fits within the boundaries week. So here we go. Stressed out parents and caregivers, do you find yourself stressed out and realizing your window of tolerance is a little too small and you lose control before you even know it? Would you like to get rid of that stress and open the window of tolerance, but you just don't know how? No worries. In the next five minutes or so, I'll share with you what the window of tolerance is, why self-care is so important for your window of tolerance, why I think of self-care as a boundary how and why you may want to start practicing self-care and respecting it like a personal boundary too. If you would like to see my longer video on boundaries and my parenting method called Cube that gets into how my clients and I focus on connection, are intentional about boundaries and build integrated families, comment hashtag boundaries below and I'll get you that link right away. For those of you who don't know, my name is Matt Kenyon, and I am a family relationship coach and the, the owner of Free Thought Coaching, where I help parents end the conflict, build happily integrated families, and create intentional boundaries. My promise is that there is always at least one piece of advice, strategy, tool, or tip that you can use by the end of my videos. All right, so the best definition that I can find, the one that really resonates with me and my favorite is uh, for the win definition for the window of tolerance is by Dr. Daniel J. Siegel in his book, The Pocket Guide for Interpersonal Neurobiology. You probably have heard me mention Daniel Siegel before. I absolutely love his work and so much of what I do is based on his work. He was the father of this new neuro um, cross cross uh, uh, scientific department in thing called interpersonal neurobiology, where he's trying to bring consensus from different scientific fields together to talk about what is the mind and how can we better work on it. All right, so back to his definition. Daniel Siegel's definition is, quote, a window of tolerance is the span of arousal within which a system can maintain the harmonious and adaptive flow of integration. That's a pretty good definition, but it probably needs to be broken down a little bit to really fully grasp it. So let's do that. All right, so span of arousal. Let's start with arousal. Arousal is some sort of stimulus that is creating a response in your nervous system. Um, it can be things such as like well, a big emotion, scary disturbance, a shocking situation, someone else's big emotions, or almost anything that causes an emotional response with you and you and engages your fight or flight system. And the span is just referring to the range of stimulus or arousal that we can tolerate in a given moment. I hope that makes sense. As far as system, well, the system that there's referring to is just the system that we're talking about. And in this case, that system is either you or your family or your other relationships. They're all systems, they're complex systems. So, now let's move on to the next piece, harmonious and adaptive flow of integration. All right, well, if you've watched any of my other videos, you've heard me talk about integration. Integration is defined as differentiation and linkage of different parts within a system. So if we think of our body, we have different parts in our body. We have our brain, our right arm, our left arm, our big toe, we have many different parts and all of them have different functions. And we realize optimal health when we have linkage of all those systems together. We make sure they're doing their thing and they're linked together in a system. And as you may have heard me mention before, that integration is considered to be the pinnacle of a healthy system. What kind of systems? Well, systems like our brain, our body, our family, our relationships, all of those are complex systems that need integration in order to be fully functional and healthy. Harmonious and adaptive are two key components of integration. So let's talk about harmonious first. Harmonious is like a choir. Think of it as a choir, right? Everybody in the choir, all the sections are singing different notes, they're differentiated, but they're harmonizing 
linking in the better they are at differentiating and linking the more beautiful the music is adaptive all right so let's talk about our body as a system that adapts right when you are say in fight or flight or even you know exercising right that increased activity means that your body needs more oxygen and so the system of your body adapts and increases the heart rate system adapting to a change in the environment right so let's put all of this together Look at it like this. The amount of arousing stimulus that you can handle before you stop being able to adapt and be harmonious with the environment and people around you is when you are outside of your window of tolerance. You lose control. Because outside of that window, you're going to lose control and become emotionally controlled instead of having your prefrontal cortex and the executive function in charge of what you're doing, your emotions take over. So where does self-care come into this? Mm -hmm. Well, self-care comes in, in that practicing self-care of all types, and the more varied, the, the better it is, reduces stress and widens your window of tolerance. What types of exercise, or what types of self-care am I talking about here? Well, self-care can be a lot of different things. It can be exercise, meditation, anything that is time in, as Daniel J. Siegel calls it, where he talks about reflection on our inner self through introspection. Anything that qualifies as that, which could just be spending time quietly outdoors, is time in. Ba baths are a great way to show self-care, relax, and have some time in. Long walks. In fact, it's encouraged that you take furry friends with you. Because then you can, again, reduce stress, as we know pets can do for all of us, and widen our window of tolerance all in one. I'm sure there are many other things that you can think of as places, things that you can do to increase your self-care. Go ahead and throw those in the comments. I would really, really like to see those in the comments. That'd be great. Let's keep going. All right, so bigger window of tolerance brings more stability and response flexibility to our family relationships, right? So response flexibility means that we have more time and emotional flexibility to respond in an intentional way to foster integration and build connection, right? Response flexibility comes from having an open window of tolerance. So the wider we can make that window of tolerance, the better we can have that response flexibility and be able to deal with situations as they come and not become emotionally overwhelmed. I treat my exercise and meditation time as a non-negotiable boundary. I always exercise on the day I'm scheduled to may need to modify my time or my activity, you know, say, for example, walk instead of run. Maybe I go for a long walk with the family instead of going for my run that day. Sometimes I may do a shorter meditation or skip meditation at all altogether and do something called where are my feet. It's a little exercise that you can do literally anywhere, even driving the car, where you can put your, your mind into, okay, where are my feet? What are they feeling? What are they doing? And it helps bring us into that present moment and get some time in. When I absolutely just can't do those things, I adjust and find a solution without stress. Maybe that's that I moved my, my, my run to the next day and I do two days in a row of running instead of just one. Or maybe I take my run that I don't have time for today and I split it up into two shorter runs. I do a short one today and I do a short one tomorrow. Either way, I find a solution and I adjust because that's part of integration. And it ensures that I am emotionally available to handle the challenges of parenting as they are guaranteed to come up every day. I make sure I have time for me to be more in touch with myself so that I can show up as a better parent. And you can do this too. Practice self-care and make sure it's something that you make happen no matter what. All right, well, to see my longer video, 
on boundaries and my parenting method called Cubed that gets into how my clients and I build connection, are intentional about boundaries and build integrated families. Comment hashtag boundaries below and I will get you that link. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Practice regular self care and happy parenting. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this video has been useful to you. I would love it if you could leave a comment with something in this video that resonated with you or helped you and your family out on your journey. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can get notified when I release new content. It massages the algorithm and helps get these videos out to other parents that need them. I really do appreciate your love and support. If you would like to join my Facebook community, Connected Parenting, where I have other videos, group of parents who are struggling with the same issues you are, there is a link down in the description. Have a great day. Try to be the parent your kids need today. Happy parenting.